the pop of the mindset as the uh, the time was was taken down uh, was to expect that, but you never expect the first one. And I was you know inches from you when it happened, and uh, the first one's always a shock. Uh, but you know our training kicks in and we react, and I think you saw that. Um, but that's part of being a Marine. It's part of our job, and it's uh, to adapt the environment you're in and get your job done. So do you think people feel pretty protected? Uh, uh, we're, we're hearing, you know, people in New York are asking, are people feeling confident in the, in the gear that you have and the training that you have, missiles flying overhead? Uh, we're very confident in the gear we've been issued. Uh, it's been inspected. Uh, we've trained with it on several occasions. Uh, we put trust in the medical personnel we receive here, or received here to, in support of us and the meds we've been given. Uh, from a medical standpoint, Doc, I think uh, we're pretty well protected. Shock and awe, that's the term that we keep hearing again. Have we seen it yet? Uh, I, haven't, I haven't seen it from here, but that doesn't mean anything. Uh, you know, you can't see very far with these berms or in the bunker. Uh, we spent a lot of time in the bunker today. Um, but uh, I'm sure uh, the response will be just, as the president said. And uh, we'll just wait on that. All right. Lieutenant Mike Below, Paul, five such bunker calls today, at times wearing the gas mask for up to an hour. People do feel very confident, though. That's the one thing that struck me. People uh, feel very confident uh, waiting in the bunkers with the gas masks on. People are understandably uh, anxious, but I didn't uh, sense a, sen a sense of uh, over overly being scared. Paula? Sanjay, before we let you go, we're going to try to bring Major General Don Shepard into the conversation, who joins us from Atlanta right now, formerly of the Air Force. General Shepard, fire away. Yeah, well, I remember in Vietnam, uh, we used to get uh, so many rocket and mortar attacks, we got complacent. I was just wondering from the lieutenant if he sees anybody get complacent yet as they've run in and out of these bunkers and really nothing has happened yet, Paula. Sanjay, I'll let that uh, yeah. ask that question yeah. Mr. Yeah. Bellello. Yeah, Lieutenant Pallola, Major uh, General Don Shepard is asking a question, which is that with so many bunker calls, do you think that there's a concern, or have people already started to become somewhat complacent with this? Do you think that's a, a risk? Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, I would say that uh, complacency uh, will get Marines killed, and we're told that in training, so there are no complacent Marines here. Yeah. We're swift in, uh, in every drill. Yeah, I think pretty clear answer there, uh, Major General Shepard. Hey, Grad, and I uh, pass on to him to stay that way all the way to Baghdad. Yeah, and he passes on to stay that way all the way to Baghdad. Again, Lieutenant Mike Bellello joining me here in uh, the northern desert of Kuwait. Paula? Thanks so much, Sanjay. Uh, General Shepard, just a quick question to you. We saw Kira Phillips on board the, the USS uh, Lincoln a little bit earlier this morning, and she talked about F-14s taking off and F-18s. Just give us a sense now that this first attack was launched overnight. Uh, what On this edition of the Pendleton Journal, a new device allows safer free fall for Marines, the Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary and Service Medals are approved by the President, and a new B-Billet allows Marines to stay in the trenches. Stay tuned, we have all this and more. The Pendleton Journal is next. Focusing on the news and information that affects the lives of Camp Pendleton's Marine sailors and families. This is the Pendleton Journal. Welcome to the Pendleton Journal. I'm Second Lieutenant Mike Bellello. One Marine Expeditionary Force, led by Lieutenant General James T. Conway, has taken operational control of the Al Anbar Providence from the U.S. Army's 82nd Airborne Division to continue security and stabilization operations. The change of authority ceremony took place Wednesday, March 24th at a Camp Fallujah in western Iraq. The area has been a nesting ground for anti-coalition terrorists and former regime loyalists. One MEF's goal is to bring stability, security, and democracy to the people of western Iraq. The Marines are expected to spend 14 months in Al-Anbar, work to rebuild infrastructure, create jobs, and conduct a transition to Iraqi sovereignty. During its first deployment in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom, one Marine Expeditionary Force completed the longest overland assault in the history of the Marine Corps. After major combat operations ended, the Marines conducted security and stabilization operations in southern Iraq. Petty Officer Clifford Salviejo of Marine Air Group 39, 3rd Marine Air Wing, received the Bronze Star last month for heroic actions during Operation Iraqi Freedom, where he tended to wounded Marines in a minefield. Without any regard for his own life, without any regard to thinking that I'm a Generation Xer and I'm not supposed to be doing this kind of stuff, he went and he said, I'm going to go down and treat that Marine, and he did. 
Once I got to the last patient where it really got critical was when I really started thinking, what did I get myself into? But I kept myself focused and I was okay. Free falling from 25,000 feet got a little safer for some first force recon company Marines. Sergeant Jim Houston has a story. Marines and their corpsmen have an added measure of reporting for the Pendleton Journal. President George W. Bush has approved the award and establishment of the Global War on Terrorism Service and Expeditionary Medals. The medals are intended to recognize the accomplishments of military service members participating in or supporting operations of the Global War on Terrorism, according to MAR Admin 129-04, published March 13th. To qualify for the Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal, Marines must have deployed abroad for service in support of Global War on Terrorism operation beginning September 11, 2001, to a future date to be determined. Approved operations for the Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal are operations enduring freedom and Iraqi freedom. Criteria for the Global War on Terrorism Service Medal will be announced in a future more admin message. For more information on the Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal, visit the Marine Corps website at www.usmc.mil. Then click on More Admins under Quick Links. Then click on More Admin 129-04. Up next, Lance Corporal Mark Sixby stopped by 11th Marines to get some safety tips when operating a high-mobility, multi-wheeled vehicle commonly referred to as the Humvee. In February, Camp Pendleton lost a Marine to a tactical vehicle accident on base. The sort of tragedy the Corps tries to avoid. I'm Lance Corporal Mark Sixby. When we return from the break, more road construction means more traffic delays. And Marines seeking to complete a B billet now have a fourth option. All this and more is still to come on the Pendleton Journal. But first, here's today's Journal Tribute question. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, which Marine Corps legend was part of a force led by American Consul William Eaton against the Pirates of Tripoli, raising the United States flag for the first time over a conquered fortress of the Old World at Dern? Was it A, Lieutenant General Louis Chesty Puller, B, Sergeant Major Dan Daly, C, Lieutenant Presley O'Bannon, or was it D, Colonel Mitchell Page? We'll have the answer later on the show. Welcome back. From fire trucks to police cruisers, Marines and government employees now have a way to keep their government vehicles looking sharp. A new 24-hour car wash facility here was officially opened Friday, March 26th, and is intended to help maintain the transportation office's fleet of more than 1,000 vehicles, as well as protect the environment. The car wash's filtration system will conserve water by separating dirt and soap from the used water and recycling it back through the system. The car wash also provides an environmentally safe place to wash government vehicles. Marines are discouraged from washing vehicles in their work areas because of runoff pollution that contaminates drinking water and affects wildlife. Additionally, the car wash is expected to save money for the Marine Corps by maintaining vehicle serviceability and resale value. Major General William G. Bowden, Base Commanding General, attended the ribbon cutting ceremony. The facility was dedicated to Dorothy A. Duckworth, a former manager at Fleet Transportation who passed away January 12th. The car wash is located near the motor transport section in the 22 area. Not deployed? Well, you too can help fight the war on terrorism with a pint and a few minutes of your time. Corporal Derek Small explains. With approximately 14,000 Marines and sailors from Camp Pendleton participating in Operation Iraqi Freedom, I'm Corporal Derek Small. Expect on and off traffic delays along Vandegrift Road near the Margarita Ranch House until late April. Construction will continue on Vandegrift and Bassinone roads for most of 2004 as workers install four miles of welded steel pipe to transfer raw water to the 22 area filtration plant. The project is designed to improve the quality of drinking water on the south end of Camp Pendleton for the next 50 years. Construction officials urge drivers to keep an eye out for changing traffic patterns and to obey posted signs. Starting April 3rd, several base services will have new hours to conserve resources. The Del Mar gate will be closed 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. daily. The police records section in building 1523 and the joint reception center pass and ID will be open from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday through Friday. And finally, the main gate pass and ID section will operate from 7.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. For more information, call PMO at 725-5001 or services at 763-1221. 
Marine Corps martial arts training will soon be available on PCs. Corporal Jan Bender explains. The first of the newly Marines may agree it's fun to stay at the YMCA because of recent upgrades. The center was renamed the KABC Radio Armed Services YMCA Recreation Center. The center was renamed in honor of various organizations that largely contributed to the Operation lend -A -Hand, a program designed to help military families. The program received almost $355,000 through a fundraising event sponsored by KABC, KLOS, and ESPN Radio. $100,000 went to improving the Recreation Center, which now has a 35-inch Panasonic television, various video game rooms, a new pool table, and much more. The remaining funds will go towards the education program for the children of Marines and sailors who lost their lives in Operation Iraqi Freedom. When we return from the break, Marines seeking to complete a B-billet now have a new option, and we'll take a close-up look at Team Marines racing. That's still to come on the Palantir Journal, but first, here's another look at today's journal trivia question. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, which Marine Corps legend was part of a force led by American Consul William Eaton against the pirates of Tripoli, raising the United States flag for the first time over a conquered fortress of the Old World at Dern? Was it A, Lieutenant General Lewis Chesty Puller, B, Sergeant Major Dan Daly, C, Lieutenant Presley O'Bannon, or was it D, Colonel Mitchell Page? We'll have the answer after the break. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. The answer to our trivia question today, C, Lieutenant Presley O'Bannon. O'Bannon, with seven other Marines, was part of a force of Greeks and Arabs led by American Consul William Eaton. William Eaton conquered a fortress at Dern, stronghold of the Pirates of Tripoli, on April 27, 1805, and raised the American flag for the first time over a conquered fortress in the Old World. Two Marines were killed and one wounded in the assault on the walled city. For more Marine Corps history and facts, visit the History Museum's webpage at www.usmc.mil. Click on the History Museum section under Quick Links. The Marine Corps has many recruiting tools. In 2001, they introduced their fastest one. Private First Class Paul Robbins Jr. explains. Of all the methods used by the Marine Corps Recruiting Command to bring young volunteers to the Corps, the number 25 book Private First Class, Paul Robbins Jr. Marine Corps Community Services will sponsor the 9th Annual Kid First Fair April 24th. Designed to promote awareness for the month of the military child and child abuse prevention, the fair will feature a variety of informational booths, games, and live entertainment for children. The fair is open to all base residents and workers. It starts at 10 a.m. and goes until 2 p.m., and takes place at the main exchange concourse on main side. Next, Marines seeking to complete a B billet have a fourth option which allows them to stay in the trenches. Corporal Jan Bender has more. Whether it's digging a fighting hole or setting up a Claymore mine. One retired Marine here is helping the Marine Corps fight battles before they happen. And with 50 years in the business, he's the right man for the job. With 13 years enlisted and 18 years as an officer, Retired Major Robert Farmer has added a wealth of experience and knowledge to the program. That's all the time we have for today's show. Thanks for watching. And remember, the Pendleton Journal and the Scout are your sources for information and news aboard Camp Pendleton. See you next time.